Hello, everyone. Uh, I was asked multiple times to create uh, something related to the Cisco uh, VXLAN. So finally, uh, the uh, Cisco VXLAN uh, course is ready. So I would like to discuss with you what exactly will be covered in this particular series. So uh, the series name is Mastering Cisco VXLAN, wherein we'll be covering the theory part. We'll do the practicals, we'll do the labs of each and every uh, concept. And then uh, along with the theory and the lab part, we will do a packet work related to the each of your topics, okay? So the prerequisite is that uh, you must have the basic knowledge of routing and switching, how exactly OSPF works, how BGP works, so you must be aware of that. Uh, so who can purchase this particular course? So someone who is preparing for the interviews, and if you are lacking the knowledge of VXLAN, so you can purchase this particular series. Uh, if you want to enhance your VXLAN knowledge, then you can also go for this. Or maybe if uh, VXLAN is already running into your, your network that uh, you are working upon, so this series will be super beneficial because we will cover each and every details of how uh, VXLAN works. The last one is that if uh, some of you are preparing for the CCA data center exam, wherein uh, VXLAN is one of the topics uh, of that uh, exam. So those uh, students can also purchase this particular series. Now let's see what will be, uh, what we will be covering in this particular series. So this is the topology that uh, we'll be working upon uh, for our lab scenarios. So we'll be using the spine leaf architecture and uh, the uh, in our later topics. So our leaf switches will also be a part of VPC. We will also see how we can uh, connect the outside network with our VXLAN fabric. Okay, so this is the topology that we are going to use. Uh, then, uh, Let's see what are the topics that I'll be covering in this particular uh, series, okay? So first of all, I'll discuss because uh, all the practicals that I had done during this uh, series, uh, I had done it on uh, EVNG. So I faced a couple of issues while working on this series. So uh, I'll discuss with you what were those issues that I faced and how did I fix them. Then we'll be uh, covering the uh, VXLAN high level overview. So into the VXLAN high level overview, we'll be covering the challenges that was there into the legacy networks. We'll see what is the use of VNIs. Uh, we'll uh, discuss briefly about underlays and overlays. And then we'll be discussing about the benefits we will also discuss what is the logic behind 16 million broadcast domains and that we talk about into in reference of VNIs into VXLAN. We'll discuss about the MTU consideration. Then I will be discussing about the IP schema uh, designing that uh, we can consider into our VXLAN fabric. Then we'll be uh, doing a topology overview. So I'll show you what is the topology that we are going to use into our practicals. What is the IP schema that is uh, being used? What is the MAC address that I had modified and everything I'll be uh, discussing in that overview. Then we'll discuss about uh, the static ingress replication. We'll do a lab. Then after the lab, we'll do a packet work for the static ingress replication. We'll discuss about the benefits, what are the drawbacks of static ingress replication. Then uh, uh, we'll discuss about the ingress replication, or you can say that dynamic ingress replication that will be done using the PGP. We'll do a lab of that. And after the lab, we'll be doing the uh, packet work. We'll discuss about what is the use of route type three. So. Uh, We'll discuss about uh, the route types uh, that are uh, supported by the Cisco deployment. So basically we'll discuss about route, route type two, route type three, and route type five. 
okay so we'll discuss about the benefits and drawbacks of uh, the dynamic ingress replication also using bgp <clears throat> then we'll discuss about the intra subnet communication using the multicast we'll do a lab of that after the lab uh, we'll be discussing about the packet work for intra subnet communication using multicast then we'll discuss about a special feature which is suppressor we'll do a packet work of that then we are going to discuss about the inter subnet communication we'll do a lab and then we'll do a packet work there are a couple of uh, examples when we discuss about the inter subnet communication so we'll discuss about those so you can see here we have inter subnet communication with silent host we'll do a packet work and then uh, we'll also do the inter subnet communication with silent host we'll do a lab okay so we'll do lab for both uh, non silent hosts and for silent hosts okay then we'll discuss about the how vpc is going to work in case of vxlan we'll also do a packet work and some other stuff which are important to discuss into the vxlan and vpc then uh, uh, we'll discuss about how we can connect the uh, outside network with our vxlan fabric uh, we'll uh, do a short uh, discussion about the asymmetric IRB though it is not supported by Cisco but I have created a short video on that also what exactly is that then we'll discuss about the endpoint mobility or if your endpoint uh, moved from one location to another location what exactly happens within your VXLAN network so these are the topics that i'll be covering into this particular series so we'll uh, go into all of the details we'll do the theory part lab part and the packet work so there are some sample uh, videos also that i'll be uh, posting on my youtube channel so you can have a look at that you can go into the playlist section and just check the cisco vxlan uh, playlist okay so this is the fee structure for this particular series or maybe if uh, you want to purchase uh, aci plus vxlan both or though for those who already purchased this uh, aci series they can also uh, buy this particular series with some discount so if and if you want to purchase this particular series you can write an email to me at ccie57391 at gmail.com so i hope that uh, you will enjoy and you will learn a lot with this series and thanks for watching